The hell you doing out here, Fred? The hell you doing? What the hell are you? No, no! What the hell are you doing out here, Fred? You better tell me how you got out here. Fred, if you're real, you better tell me right now. Fred, if you're real, you better tell me right now. Damn it, Fred. Damn it. Welcome back to North Wind Aerial. I'm getting ready to set up for a search and rescue training course for my team who's gonna come out and fly some drones, get some experience with drones, and I wanna put them through a full-blown training uh, exercise. So the purpose of the training exercise I'm setting up is going to be identifying clues and people through trees, namely using the orchard surrounding the farm that I'm on. I'm gonna set up various different colored bits of clothing in rows so that people can mostly get a good idea of what they look like from the air because everything looks different from the air and from different heights. I'm going to take my four-wheeler out with my buddy here and leave both of them out in the middle of the orchards. This is basically simulating someone who, an elderly person who has walked away or driven away on a four-wheeler and gotten lost in the woods and been there overnight. That's kind of the general idea of a training scenario that I'm setting up. I've actually was able to get a TV set up, so hopefully I should be able to train some of my guys and girls on being good spotters, because that's a huge portion of Drone SAR, is having other people watching your screen with you to pick out different colorations. I'm gonna sit up in the bed of my pickup and screen share the controller to. Hopefully I keep it, hopefully it works. I had some issues last training day where the um, where the projector just did not want to work. So I'm hoping with the uh, TV, I should be able to get things to work fairly well. With that note, let's go get loaded up on the four wheeler. Oh, he's still full of water for when I drowned him. This dude is so done with life. God, what happened to his eye? I wonder if that's from the chlorine. Alright, I think I'm going to put him down, laying up against this dead tree because it's easy for me to remember where it is and it's going to provide enough cover to give him a challenge without being too hard, I think. Gave up my work boots because they're falling apart to him. I think I'm going to use one of them as a clue. All right, I think having them lay down like that's going to be a little bit better. So I'm going to be very curious myself because I'm going to bring the drone out here and look for them myself to make sure everything's basically make sure everything's going to be able to be seen from the air before I run other people through the lesson. But um, I think that's going to work pretty good. Let's go spread these other clues. See how well that stays there. Bright and early the next morning, my team met up to get the drones in the air. We started off with a couple of very basic scenarios. Using a portable gasoline generator and a TV I had purchased the prior day, I was able to set up a viewing station in the back of my truck. In addition to the missing person scenario I'd set up, I also placed several different colored articles of clothing out in the orchard to give the team a good idea of how different colored clothing can affect their visibility to be spotted. As soon as we finished going over that, I sent my team's loose using the DJI Mavic 3T and the DJI Matrice 30T, both owned by me, to go out and start looking for the missing person. I tried to remain pretty hands-off, allowing my team members to get used to flying and controlling the drones, and I focused mainly on a spotter and command role. After a short while of searching, one of the team members was able to spot the boot from the air, 
and using that location and a hint or two from me, they were able to search through the woods and locate our missing person. One of the things I teach my team members is not get hyper-focused on finding the missing person per se. Look for items that seem out of place. Look for different colors that stand out against the background. That's what's going to lead you to finding the person. Keep a lookout for colors that are not naturally occurring in your area, such as yellows, pinks, reds, or blues, or especially orange, which we have none of those in a giant sea of green. This is one of the many reasons why you'll see search and rescue personnel wear bright reflective yellow, red, or orange. They stand out from the background and are highly visible. After locating the missing person, our team hiked out to go retrieve them using GPS pins. And while they were hiking through the orchard, we got a pretty good glimpse of the capabilities of the thermal imaging camera to penetrate through the canopy. It worked a lot better than I even expected. Even on a warm summer morning, they still gave off enough body heat to easily be seen through the leaves. Sometimes the thermal camera worked even better than the normal camera for tracking them through the leaves. After retrieving the missing person, our team regrouped at the command post. It was a great little crash course for all of my guys and girls that hadn't really put hands on drones before or used a command screen, but I wanted to do a little bit more. A few days later, when I filmed that stupid intro of this video, I went out and moved the missing person around to go out and get some more recordings and some more photos. I got several different photos at several different altitudes, namely 100, 200, 300, and 400 feet. This was to get a good glimpse of what a missing person might look like in a wooded area from common altitudes I would be flying at. Additionally, after sharing a write-up about our training to a search and rescue Facebook group, I was reached out to by one of the members who asked if I wouldn't mind doing some beta testing for a program they're developing, which is the Automated Drone Image Analysis Tool from Texar. This program works by scanning photos captured from drone missions for any sort of color spectrum that you are looking for. The benefit of this would be going out and flying a drone mission where you're mapping out an area and getting hundreds of photos facing straight down. Then you're able to come back and process all of those photos while you have a ground search team out to see if you can potentially spot the missing person on any of those photos you've captured. This allows you to have a computer double check your work and make sure that there's nothing you missed while you might have been manually flying over. So I had this video completely finished and uploaded before I realized that I really didn't even show how this whole thing works or how to specifically use it. So let's go over that right now. I've set my input folder and my output folder already. And down here you can see in my input folder, I have five photos from a search and rescue mission that took place way earlier this year. We're gonna try and find me in these photos. The object identifier color is gonna be yellow, showing basically that's what's gonna be the circle where it finds the uh, colors we're looking for. Start off with the color range. See if we can find me. I am wearing orange, bright orange. Hit start, it's going to process. No areas of interest identified in any of the five photos with those three colors. So what I found to work pretty good is just pick a different color in the same hue to try and basically match the lighting of which the lighting in this photos were pretty terrible because it was nighttime. No areas of interest identified. So start moving towards the reds. Try and try and try and pick up my orange jacket. Try one more red color and no areas of interest identified. This is something I really need to work around with, but for the meantime, I'll say the for using the search algorithm, color range is really not my favorite. Probably my favorite is matched filter, which same thing, pick a color, and it's gonna search for anything kind of close to that. I'll let it process, and right there you can see areas of interest identified, we found three. Let's check out the results, and boom, you'll see in this big photo, stuff like that. You can see in this photo, it very clearly picks me out. Now you might be thinking, well, I could easily pick out someone in this photo if I stared at it long enough. That's why I say this program is probably best suited for batch photos, where you want to pull off a bunch of photos from your SD card when you're out flying around, put everything into one program and have it double check your work. Go to the next photo, you can see it picks me out 
and then the next image it picks me up from a completely different view. Let's change around that color, see if we can pick me out on a couple on the other two. Matched filter. Areas of interest identified in all five photos. So I changed it to a different color of orange, mainly because again, everything is washed out. It's, it was dark when I took these photos. And yep, sure enough, two, three, four, five. Found me in all five photos, all from kind of different angles. So yeah, the matched filter algorithm so far is my favorite. You can change the threshold around. So sometimes it'll, if it has a hard time finding them, It'll make it easier. Area of limit exceeded. No, we're not going to do that. Anyways, matched filter works great. The last one you can go through is the RX anomaly, which will look for anything out of place in the photos, colors that, that things shouldn't be there. So you can see, found areas of interest in all five photos, view results. And this one, it does have some issues with picking up false positives. I don't know if it saw Sasquatch over here or whatever, but that doesn't look any different than what uh, everything else looks like. But it still picked me out, picked me out, picked out Sasquatch again, picked me out, picked out a bunch of Sasquatches, and then four and five, it still picked me out. So the algorithm for the RX anomaly could use a little bit of work. There's some bit of feedback for Textar, but it still works great in my opinion. The fact it found all five is perfect. But by far and away, the matched filter just, it, this is the one that I would highly suggest you use. It's the one I've been using on all of my photos to really dig down deep and find it. So. Yep, sorry for the kind of breakup in the video, but really wanted to get that in. So just to show you exactly how this program works. I wanted to put the program through three different tests. One in kind of low light conditions where colors might have shown up a bit more muted. One where it's very bright outside, probably the best ideal conditions. And then the third in very heavy tree cover. Now keep in mind, this program is still very much in its beta testing, and I am still learning exactly how to work it and figure out which search algorithm for the colors works best. So let's start with the brightly lit photos, which is going to be your best case scenario. You're going to want to drag the photos into an input folder that the program will then pull them from. Once you've got the data set that you want to scan, you'll then pick the specific color spectrum that you want to look for within the photos. There's several different ways of doing it, and I'm sure there's better guides out there. I didn't read the instructions and went into it blind because... <laughs> then just hit start and the program will start going over your images. In this one, I decided to look for light blue, which was the color of the jeans. I switched looking for colors on the red spectrum and ended up finding so many that it overwhelmed the system and let me know that there were way too many items of interest to check out. Switching to search algorithm, however, got a lot better results and picked out multiple different spots on his shirt, which is exact data I was looking for. Even though much of the surrounding area was a kind of tan, creamish skin color, I decided to go ahead and search for the skin color of the dummy. And I got a few false positives, but it did in fact find the dummy, which really surprised and impressed me. Finally, I decided to search for a darker blue color to see if I could pick up those jeans easier, and sure enough, it picked them up right away. All in all, it worked great. I just have a lot to learn when it comes to this program. Let's see how well it works in kind of dimmer light conditions, though, when the colors are a lot more muted. These were taken in the evening time when the sun had pretty much set, but there was still plenty of light out and about. I started off searching the dark red of the shirt, and it returned so many results that I basically had to hit cancel. I attribute this to it trying to find so many different dark colors, it just overwhelmed the system again. Now remember, this is not a knock on this program at all, it's just working with whatever you feed into it. And when you feed it images that are kind of washed out due to low light, you're going to get what you're going to get. The one color it was consistently able to pick out, however, even in this low light, was blue, very much to my surprise. Every color change, every algorithm I used to try and find blue on, it consistently found those genes every single time. 
I tried searching for blacks, browns, and tans, and it overwhelmed the system due to the amount of dirt and especially the irrigated dirt around it. The only one that really, really worked in this low light condition was blue. Like I said, it found it every single time, which was a huge surprise to me. The final test I really wanted to put this program through was finding someone who is greatly obscured in the trees. Up until now, I've had the dummy kind of sitting underneath a dead tree, very easily seen from the sky. I wanted to really, really push this program to its limits. I went out into the orchard and found an area where the tree cover was heaviest, and made it so that most of the colors on the dummy should still be visible, hopefully, through the leaves. I then went back to the house, put up the drone, and spent about 15 minutes trying to figure out where I put the dummy because I completely forgot and he was so obscured from the air that I could barely see him. I snapped a couple photos, some of which I had to do a double take and make sure that I could in fact see the dummy still in the photos, but I figured this would be the ultimate test to see how well it can pick out people in between the trees. As expected, it had a fair amount of trouble picking out the missing person in between the trees. The one photo that it really for sure picked out the person was the photo that had already been taken on the zoom lens from the Mavic 3T. While editing this video, I went back and looked at all of the photos I got just to see how hard it was to pick them out with the naked eye, and turns out it was really, really difficult even when I knew exactly where the missing person was the entire time. So again, I can't fault the program at all for not finding them. It all comes down to lighting and resolution of the photos. All in all, I'm really impressed with the automated drone image analysis tool from Texar. I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with the full build of this, and hopefully I can keep testing it for them. There's a thermal image analysis tool that comes with this program that I'm going to do a little bit more video on, and I've got a lot more testing I'd like to do. I could absolutely see myself using this program out in the field on many different search and rescue missions. Being able to fly out, map out an area, and plug all these photos into a program to help me check and see if there's anything I missed seems like an invaluable tool in our box of things to try and help other people. If there's one thought I could close with though, this is why you need to wear reflective and bright clothing when you're out and walking around in the wilderness. It makes it a lot easier for rescuers to find you. Well, thank you so much for watching today's episode of North Wind Aerial. God, his head fell off again. Hopefully you, you learned at least a little bit about Drone SAR and really enjoyed the small presentation about the automated drone image analysis tool. Thank you so much to Techstar for letting me beta test it out and make a video on it. This video was not sponsored by them. There was no money exchanged hands, nothing at all. I just did some beta testing for them and I really liked the program and I'm really looking forward to testing it a bit more. Um, if there is any sort of test you would like me to do with this image analysis stuff, leave them in the comments. Let me know. I would love to make some more videos on this. I want to come out here and do some testing once it cools off a bit and really hammer down on the uh, thermal testing that comes with this whole pro that comes with this whole software. I'm really looking forward to doing that, but I'm sure there's some ideas bouncing around in your guys' heads that you'd really like me to test out and I'm always open to ideas. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.